So, hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Johnny Chips Weekly. My name is John Lunn, aka Johnny Chips, and in this show we talk all things cloud, we talk all your Azure news and updates and community call-outs, a little bit about the Welsh Azure user group, and a little bit about what I've been up to this week. So, this is episode number 90 on the 30th of September 2022, the big 9-0. So, hey, everybody. Hope you've uh, been doing well all week. Um, what you've been up to? I've been pretty busy, as usual. A bit dark in here today. don't know why. Let's turn the lights up. Let's get a little bit of light on the situation. There we go. Make my face a little bit brighter. How you been doing? Hope you've all had a fantastic week. Uh, join in the chat below. Um, yeah, been busy, busy. Lots of good, exciting news from my part coming up over the next few weeks, but we'll uh, we'll get to that in due course. Uh, but for now, let's just jump straight into the show then. Let's do some community call-outs. Let's get on with it. If I can find my button, look, I'm way out of practice with this, so uh, apologies. But let's um, let's get there now. Okay, road trip uh, to Wales. Emma Dolin, thank you for sharing this out on behalf of SQL Bits. Um, SQL Bits have just announced their next event is going to be at the ICC uh, International Convention Centre in Wales, which is just over the bridge. Uh, if you're coming into Wales from sort of the Bristol side of things, come over the bridge. Um, just before you get to Newport, you'll see this big old building by Celtic Manor. Literally, it's in the same footprint as Celtic Manor, the ICC. Caught my eye because, yeah, I've been looking at um, doing something there myself um, for the community uh, uh, in recent times. So be great to see this March the 14th to the 18th next year. So bookmark your diaries now. Get your hotels booked. Some great hotels around that, including the Celtic Manor. Um, well worth a visit. Um, yeah, I'm going to obviously stick that in my calendar and see if I can get down to that. You know, not being a data guru or anything like that. But certainly as it's on my doorstep, I think I might um, might have to partake in a bit. So thanks for sharing that out, Em. That's marvellous. Good to see. So there we go. Sequel Bits 2023 will be at ICC Wales, March the 14th to the 18th. And you can see it's got some great... Uh, great event space in there as well so it'll be the first time i would have been in there at that point i would have thought i'm not planning on going in there anytime soon so yeah get that in your diaries anyway thanks em next up um yeah nicholas chang retweeted this out um you know there's 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 a lot of good stuff going out on the community at the moment but um it's, it's lately we started to see a few documentaries on tech you know the kubernetes documentary come out now Thomas Maurer obviously posted this as well because he's in the documentary, but there's going to be uh, a documentary called Clouded, uh, the un Uncovering the Culture of Cloud 2022. That's due out, I believe, this month at some point. So thanks, Nicholas, for tweeting that out. Stay tuned. Keep your eyes peeled for that. And I'm sure Thomas will be um, retweeting or putting posts up on LinkedIn about it. But that looks really, really cool. I'm uh, going to obviously look forward to watching that one. So if you're interested, like I say, go and follow Thomas Maurer on uh, on LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, just stay tuned. You know, I'll I'll as soon as I see the announcement go out as to when it's going to be um, um, released. I believe it is this month, uh, October by this month, of, of course. Um, that'll be pretty cool. Good thing to to have a little look at. So looking forward to seeing that. Uh, next up, of course, some announcements about Microsoft Ignite. That's coming up uh, only in a few weeks' time. Um, I'm not fortunate enough to get off to the States this year, but I'm planning on getting up to uh, to Manchester. I'm not sure how that's going to turn out at the minute. It's proven a little bit tricky with things I've got going on, um, so I might not get up to Manchester the way things are looking at the moment. But there's a whole heap of virtual stuff, and Scott Hanselman has tweeted this out, three and 400 level advanced uh, talks for devs. Rick Claus has tweeted out three and 400 level uh, advanced talks for IT pros and security peeps. So, look, all in all, this is set to be, you know, another great event, you know, with this hybrid. So we've obviously got all the um, all the virtual content going out there that we can join in <clears throat> remotely. We've got the events going on out in Seattle in the States. We've got the show, uh, the spotlight events locally. So there's one up in Manchester for the UK, but I believe there are showcase events globally as well. Uh, spotlight events, if I use the right terminology. Um, so, yeah, you've got no excuse not to be able to get involved this year. You know, like you say, you've got the pick of the bunch in terms of, you know, do you want to go 
in person. There's a few spotlight events across the, the globe. And, of course, um, you've got all the virtual content coming up. So, yeah, what are you waiting for? Get over and um, get yourselves registered for Ignite. Uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, next up, another sh quick shout-out uh, for Gregor and the team there that do the Festive Tech Calendar. Uh, we've got until the end of October to get our Call for Speakers, our entry onto the Call for Speakers page. Every year, this event is fantastic. It's a great kind of focal point of the year. If you're in the tech space, certainly in the cloud and the Azure space, it's a it's a focused event. Although the the, the tech event is open to any tech, you know, and and not necessarily tech. You can just do a, you know, something fun and in, uh, inclusive, uh, informative a quiz, have a bit of fun, whatever. Um, the, the the guys and gals in the organization team of the the first tech calendar are open to all sorts of contributions. So if you are interested in getting a little bit more involved in the in the tech community, then reach out, put yourselves. Uh, forward have a little bit of fun with it as well so yeah really grateful for uh, gregor and the team for running this every year it's like i say it's a really good focal event that i certainly look forward to watching and uh, hopefully participating in so um yes thank you gregor much appreciated uh next up yeah just wanted to call this out um on the point about ignite um, i'm actually joining uh, a great panel of of of, of experts um around a little bit of a uh, an Ignite after show party. So Gregor, April, Peter, Shannon, Scott, myself, we're all going to be jumping on and having a bit of a recap over the announcements of Ignite. So, you know, what caught our eye? Uh, what do we think is going to work well? Maybe some things that we don't think are going to work well or some things that we might want to um, do a little bit more digging in. Uh, really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a late one for me. I think um, in the UK... That equates to around about midnight, so um, I'm actually away that week, so I'll be in a hotel, um, live stream, <laughs> streaming midnight in a hotel. So yeah, looking forward to that. So it's uh, with come cloud with us. Go and follow them on Twitter. Go and get yourselves RSVP'd um, on the the meetup event, and yeah, look forward to doing that one as well. And finally, on the community call out, uh, Adam Jackson um, of uh, MS UK fame has retweeted this out now. So. Uh, Adam, as you may or may not know, is an absolutely huge part of the, the, the tech community in the UK. He helps and supports all the user groups, all the tech peeps across there, you know, really to kind of help get the word out in terms of uh, what's going on in, in, in the Microsoft space and all that good stuff. So there, there was a, a, a location map built not too long ago, and it's been updated, which is what Adam is telling us, with all the new user groups. So any user group in and around the UK, um, is going to be listed on there. So go and check that out. It's aka.ms slash UK community. It'll take you to this map and you can have a look and do a bit of a search for any kind of user groups um, near your area. So really cool to see. And uh, yeah, really appreciate that, Adam. Thanks for retweeting that back out. So there we go. Let's head back on over. Okie dokie. So um, yeah, that was the, the community callouts. To be honest with you, I, one thing I spotted now with the community callouts is that because we've got back to a little bit of the, the pre-COVID kind of way of life, um, you know, there's not a whole heap of stuff going on. Well, there is a lot of stuff going on, don't get me wrong. There wasn't as much stuff going on as there has been over the over the past couple of years. So um, everybody's out and about getting face-to-face -face contact with people now again, which is great, and that's what it's all about, a bit of networking. So hopefully I'll be partaking a little bit of that myself over the coming uh, weeks and months. So... Anyhow, let's jump back on over. Let's have a little bit, a uh, little bit of a look around uh, what's been going on with um, the Welsh Azure user group. Let's jump over. So yes, we've just scheduled our October meetup. So nineteenth of October, twenty twenty-two. Um, yeah, get yourselves RSVP. So we've got the awesome Mar uh, Mark Doika there to talk around the quest for serverless web sockets, uh, an adventure with Azure functions and durable functions. Uh, and we've got the basis Saha to come on and talk to us all around Azure Cosmos DB. So really looking forward. It's a really dev focused kind of session uh, in October around functions, durable functions and Azure uh, Cosmos DB. So like I say, really looking forward to that event. Get yourselves RF RSVP'd. 19th of October. There's our meetup page there. Um, starting around 6.30 p.m. Uh, BST. Uh, so yeah, if you can get uh, get yourselves onto it that would be great we'd love to have you there uh, and just a reminder if you've missed any of the welsh azure user group sessions they're all available 
below in the playlist uh, Welsh Show user group, funnily enough. Uh, go and check that out. We've got um, we've got 26 videos in there now over the last two years since the group has been running primarily virtual. Um, and we do have the October event. Um, 20, when was it? October, November? No, there, the September. So we did a hybrid event in September, which was quite, quite good fun. But yeah, they've all been virtual. So if you've missed any, go and get yourselves uh, in the playlist below and have a little look. But like I say, main point, go and get yourselves RSVP'd and we will see you there on October the 19th. Okie dokie. So we will motor straight along then. So what else have I been getting up to this week and what else have we got going on? So at the same time, uh, still motoring ahead with When Dev Meets Ops, the uh, the show I'm doing with uh, Robbie and Swami all around uh, building out microservices based architecture and e-commerce solution and microservices. Uh, we're moving slowly into the front end development now. So episode 10, which is going to be next Friday, a week today, um, is all around. We're going to finish off the last bits that we talked around Kubernetes. So deploying um, the, the microservices, the containers into Kubernetes platform. We didn't quite get that finished off on the previous episode, but then we're going to do a recap of where we're up to. So where where are we on the whole journey? What have we looked at? What are we looking at? And then this is before we move into the kind of the front end development side of things. So, you know, putting a, a, an app at the front end to kind of start um, talking and, and acting like an e-commerce solution. So, um, yes, like I say, we are motoring ahead and it's really good fun. You know, I'm certainly learning a lot speaking with the guys. Um, we're having a little bit of a talk around a few different areas. So do join us. You know, it's an interactive session uh, as best as we can, you know, in terms of, you know, drop questions in the chat, you know, put comments, uh, answers, anything like that, um, get involved. So, yeah, that's going to be next Friday, the 7th, I believe it is. It is the 7th next Friday. Um, yes, it's the 7th next Friday. So the 7th starting at around 5 p.m. BST. Go and get yourselves RSVP'd. Looking forward to that one. Uh, other news this week, I had a couple of Azure Percept dev kits delivered to me. So I've been having a little play with that, and I'm going to be cracking on with that as well. I'm doing a little bit of prototyping in terms of uh, using camera for a you know, simple people counting application. Going to take that a little bit further, you know, manipulate JSON messages, you know, get relevant JSON messages out and you know, do some cool things with message routing and um, and the like and storing of those messages in, in in databases for reporting and maybe do some other cool stuff afterwards as well so yeah um like i say got a couple of those you probably saw them sat next to me um in the intro video there on the chair but um yeah it's uh, it's a great little bit of kit um i've got two of them one of them is going to go into a prototype unit over in belfast when i'm um when i've got it to a point the other one i'm going to keep to uh to play around with so yeah looking forward to uh to doing a little bit more um, cool research with that. So anyhow, that's been me on the side for this week. Okay, so I think it's that time of um, the show again where we can actually get straight into our Azure news and updates. So let's go and do that straight away. <laughs> And hello and welcome to the Azure News and Update section. So, yes, without further ado, we've had a fair amount of announcements and there's been a few kind of, you know, obviously um, uh, various kind of feature releases on certain product ranges and updates and things like that. But let's get into it. There have been some quite, you know, there's been one or two poignant ones that I'll call out near the end. But uh, but for now, let's make a start. We'll get through these quite quickly. So first up, we've got general availability, Azure NetApp files, uh, has got some new regions and cross-region replication between Korea South, Sweden Central, uh, North Central US, East US to France Central and West Europe. So, you know, great to see the advancements with NetApp files. You know, the available regions, the cross-region replication is is broadening out. So, cool to see. Uh, next up, general availability. As you pull, I can't speak. As your policy built-in definitions for Azure NetApp files. So there's some built-in definitions now that if you want to control and govern what you do with FET NetApp files, are there available for you to have a look. There's some links there, policy definitions for Azure NetApp files. What are the the, um, the built-in policies? There's a link there for you to go and have a little look at. Um, go and check that out if that's of interest to you. 
Uh, public preview, 128 B core option for Azure SQL database standard series hardware. Fantastic. Uh, Azure Sphere 2209 has been released. Uh, public preview billing has started for Azure Monitor Logs Data Archive. So if you don't know, Data Archive is the new uh, cost-effective way of saving your log data for extended periods for up to seven years. So it's in preview at the moment, um, but the billing is, is started from September the 1st. So, you know, if you are, you know, looking to use that um, Data Archive service, then you're going to start to pay for it, uh, even though it is public preview. Okay, next up, GA, Azure Red Hat OpenShift Landing Zone Accelerator. Cool to see any Landing Zone Accelerators are always welcome because they uh, they help us get off the ground uh, quick and, you know, with a reference architecture for de deploying some certain services. Uh, so if that is of interest to you, go and, uh, go and check that out. Click on that link. Um, generally available backup and restore updates for the app service. So in the app service itself, you can restore backups and utilize the automated backups. And you can make your own kind of on-demand custom backups. Uh, and you can restore them by overwriting existing app data and restoring it into a new app or a new deployment slot. So there's some great kind of uh, updates for that. So uh, backup and restore is, um, the automatic backup and restore is generally available for basic, standard, and premium app service plan pricing tiers. Uh, custom backup and restore is generally available for basic, standard, premium and isolated app service plan uh, pricing tiers. So go and check that out if that's of interest. Uh, next up, public preview, uh, automatic, uh, automatic backup for app service environment V2 and V3, which is what we just talked about. Um, so there, that's what they're saying now. Is It's in preview for the isolated pricing tier for app service environment V2 and V3. Uh, Java 17 support in Azure Functions is in public preview. Uh, we've got generally available uh, Azure Functions.net framework support in the isolated worker model. Um, Azure Functions Linux Elastic Premium Plan Increase Maximum Scale Out Limits. That's a mouthful, that is to say, isn't it? So generally available now. So scale out limits for Azure Functions on Linux Elastic Premium Plans have increased in the following regions. So new scale out limit in the UK is 60. Don't know what it was before, but if you are using those Linux Elastic Premium Plan uh, scale outs, then uh, your limits have increased. So public preview, Azure AD authentication with Azure Database for MySQL. Um, okay, cool. Public preview announcement there. Another GA backup and restore in Azure Database for Postgres uh, SQL Flexible Server. Uh, Azure SQL pre public preview updates for late September 2022. So we can retain database backups for longer periods of time with long-term backup retention on Azure SQL uh, database hyperscale. So lots of backup um, updates this week. Generally available, Azure SQL database hyperscale reverse migration to general purpose tier. So if you migrated your databases uh, onto the hyperscale tier, you can now reverse that migration to move back onto the general purpose tier if you need to. Uh, Azure SQL general av uh, availability updates for late September. So we've got increased redundancy, increase the redundancy of our backups with GeoZone redundant storage for Azure SQL managed instance. Uh, we've got, um, we can use memory optimized premium series SQL managed instance to migrate uh, larger and more demanding workloads. And we can increase the resilience of our SQL, uh, Azure SQL database hyperscale backups with the new GeoZone redundant storage option. Cool, and we've got a GA announcement uh, on Express Route FastPath support for VNet peering and user defined routes, so UDRs. So FastPath now supports virtual network peering using uh, and using UDRs. So FastPath will send traffic directly to any VM deployed in a spoke virtual network peered in a in the virtual network where the Express Route virtual network gateway is deployed. Um, additionally, FastPath will now honor the UDR configured on the gateway subnet and send traffic directly to the Azure Firewall or third-party uh, network virtual appliance. Cool to see. So if you are using, considering using FastPath support, then uh, some good news there. And finally, final announcement, which caught my eye actually, was the public preview of the policy analytics for the Azure Firewall. Um, so it's on public preview at the minute. It provides enhanced visibility into the traffic flowing through the Azure Firewall. So enabling the optimization of our firewall configuration without impacting our application performance. Uh, so this is something that's been uh, missing for a little while, actually being able to do some other analytics on the firewall. So 
application migration into the cloud it kind of accelerates and it's um is accelerating it's common to use azure firewall configuration daily sometimes hourly to meet the growing application needs and respond to changing threat landscapes uh, frequent changes are managed by multiple administrators and spread spread across the geographies so over time the firewall configuration can grow suboptimally impacting firewall performance and security it's a challenging task for any IT team to optimize firewall rules without impacting applications and causing potentially serious downtime. So this policy analytics helps us address the challenges faced by our IT teams by providing visibility into traffic flowing through the firewall with features such as firewall flow logs, uh, rule, uh, rule to flow match, uh, rule hit rate and single rule analysis. Uh, IT admins can refine uh, Azure Firewall rules in a few simple steps through the Azure portal. So there we go. That is the end of our news for this week. Some good announcements there. Great public preview and GA announcements. Hope you've enjoyed. Let's head back on over. In now. Okie dokie. So there we go. We'll call the show for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in and coming and saying hello. Um, yeah, like I say, hope you've had... Um, a great week you've got a great weekend to look forward to now coming up uh enjoy whatever it is that you're doing um yeah i'll hope to catch you all have a great neat week next week i'll catch you all next friday so bye for me for now see you soon oh.